Guys, there, there has been a number of reviews. Everyone is saying that this is a game changer. I mean, every major publication that I think is worth reading is saying the same thing. So why? Why exactly is this ship going to change the game? Well, here's why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. A few different publications have reported that um, this is the largest ship, electric ship in the world. The largest electric ferry, the largest basically boat, which is powered by batteries, electricity. The largest, the world's largest 100% battery electric ship has been officially launched at a shipyard here in Australia, in Hobart. So Hobart is a city in Tasmania. Tasmania is an island off the mainland of Australia. And to be honest with you, a lot of people forget that um, Tasmania even exists. It's sort of an afterthought. But I've been there a couple of times. It's a beautiful place. I highly recommend if you're traveling around and you come to Australia, if you can, visit Tasmania. Anyway, this ship is in Hobart and it's almost ready for service. It's going to South America where it will ferry 2,100 passengers and 225 vehicles between Argentina and Uruguay. Now, guys, just let me just repeat that. An electric ferry they can transport 2,100 passengers and 225 vehicles. It gives you an idea of just how big this is. The 130 meter fully electric Hull 096 was constructed by Tasmanian shipbuilder INCAT for South American ferry operator Bukbus. The vessel originally intended to be fueled by gas will be equipped, says the driven.io with over 250 tons over 250 tonnes of batteries, and it will have an energy storage capacity of more than 40 megawatt hours. That's four times more than any previous electric boat in the world. In other words, this is by far the biggest. It's amazing how they've gone to this size. And I've been saying for a long time, this is possible. And it's so, it's so exciting to see it actually happen. The energy storage system is connected to eight electric driven water jets that are being supplied by Finnish energy tech giant Wattsila. With the vessel's construction complete, the focus is turning to the interior and apparently there is a 2,300 square meter retail deck, the largest shopping space on any ferry in the world. So a big shopping area. This gives you an idea just, just how enormous this electric boat actually is. INCAT says the ship's final fit-out, battery installation, and energy, and energy system integration will take place ahead of sea trials later this year on the River Derwent in Tasmania. And in fact, interestingly, this company, INCAT, who most of the boats they make aren't electric, I believe, they say that this is the future of maritime transport. We've been building world-leading vessels here in Tasmania for more than four decades, and Hull 096 is the most ambitious, most complex, and most important project we've ever delivered. This ship changes the game. Now, that's not from me, that's from the company, and I think they're right. At 130 metres in length, INCAT says the Hull 096 is not only the largest electric ship in the world, but also the largest electric vehicle of its kind ever built, and one of the most significant single export items in Australia's manufacturing history. So people say Australia doesn't manufacture anything anymore, it's all gone to China, or Southeast Asia, Indonesia, but uh, as you can see here, that's not the case. This ship puts Tasmania and Australia firmly on the world stage, Clifford said. We're incredibly proud of what our team has achieved and this is only the beginning. Now, I can't actually find out the range of this vehicle, this ship, I should say, but I do know this, around 3% of global emissions come from shipping. It's not a massive percentage, but it's still very relevant. And especially when you see a lot of ships, guys, I live here um, right on one of the, the, I believe it's the deepest port in the Southern Hemisphere. So the deepest port in the Southern Hemisphere. So we see ships here near our house coming in and out of this port, particularly coal ships, unfortunately. And we see them all the time. The emissions coming out of these things, it's black. Well, if you're surfing out in the water and they go past, you, it, it feels like you're choking on acid. It's, it's horrendous. So eventually, I think it's very likely we're going to be able to get rid of those massively polluting ships, replace them with electric ships and also hydrogen-powered ships. Now, I've mentioned why that is in the, in the past, why hydrogen will pay, play a part in that 
it's really down to the excess renewable energy capacity that the world is going to build out. But either way, the future of shipping is clean. And it's going to be great to be out in the surf and not have to worry about getting a cloud of black smoke from the ships going past. Thanks for you. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. BYD have just finished building the world's largest car carrier. It's one of an armada of apparently seven car carriers that will enable BYD to ship cars all around the world in their quest to become the largest automaker on the planet. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. This is a, an enormous ship. BYD actually launched the world's largest vehicle, Roro Vessel, which can accommodate up to 9,200 cars. You know, it's kind of interesting. What happened after COVID was global shipping, for some reason, became quite expensive. So if you're manufacturing cars, wherever it may be, Japan, Germany, China, the United States, and then you're shipping them around the world anywhere, shipping costs have gone up ex in, in, insanely. I mean, to the point where... You're kind of thinking to yourself, how can this have happened? I don't know how it happened, but it did. So BYD pretty much saw this coming, and they contracted a one of the biggest shipbuilders in the world to build them a bunch of enormous car-carrying vessels. The carrier named after BYD's hometown undocked in Yangzhou port about three hours northwest of Shanghai. This vessel is pretty damn big. It's 220 meters long. 37.7 meters wide and has a draft of nine meters. Its maximum speed is 18.5 knots, which is 34.3 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, it's not electric or powered by anything renewable, as of course, almost no ships of this size are. BYD Shenzhen is BYD's fourth car carrier. The company plans to have eight carriers in total by early 2026 to fuel its global expansion. It's going to mean that BYD won't be relying on anyone else in order to, you know, become bigger than Toyota, which I think it will. BYD is known for its enormous vertical integration. Instead of relying on 30 party, party supplies, it does things them, themselves. They're actually the second biggest battery company in the world. They make their own motors. They make their own, well, basically they make everything that goes into their cars. Not everything, but most of them, they, most of the stuff that goes into an, into an EV, they make in-house. In addition to making cars, they produce battery packs, cells, uh, they own lithium mines, they produce iPads, uh, they operate an EV insurance company in China to cover all parts of the EV supply chain. Yeah, you can see they're, they're quite vertically integrated. 